uh, or the talk will be on optical and metamaterial for, for tailoring um, and, and enhancing light matter interaction. Please uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. And also, uh, my name is Liang Zhu, uh, student of Dr. Pen Pen. And also, uh, the title of today is about the optical matter materials for tailoring and enhancing the light matter interactions. So uh, this is some information about our lab. So we are the electromagnetic and also the sensing technologies lab. And we work on the antennas, uh, the RF and the microwave practice, like the antenna design, the microwave filters, and also the uh, unclogged and the clocking uh, device. We also work on the wireless sensors, like the measurement systems about the PD symmetry uh, wireless sensor and try to improve the sensitivity of the, the, the wireless sensors. And also, we also work on the applied electromagnetics. So in such a part, we work on the metal materials about the nanophotonics and some nano electromagnetisms. Let me see. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need to mention in the light matter interaction is about the surface plant mass. So uh, we know uh, metals have a negative permittivity at uh, mid infrared and also the optical frequency because of the phase uh, retardation for the free electrons in the conduction band of the, of the metal, the collective oscillations of the electroplasma uh, near the metal surface is also uh, called surface plasma. And also metals, uh, therefore, we typically call the plasmonic materials. So uh, when a metal nanoparticle is uh, illuminated by light, uh, so typically we need to uh, match different conditions, such as the light wavelength is much larger than the particle size. So the electro dipole moment is induced because of the charge oscillation. So it would then uh, re-radiate electromagnetic wave. So the polariza uh, polarizability is a function of the epsilon of the nanoparticle and also the host medium. So here you can see. Uh, so typically for the host medium, we will have the double positive material, such as the glass. And therefore we should say the negative uh, permittivity of the metal uh, can cancel the positive epsilon of the host medium and achieve a strong resonant scattering. So uh, even the particle is very small, it can be quite bright and colorful. So uh, this is uh, one example. So uh, such an effect can be dated back to uh, like the middle age. So long history of the interest in this type of the plasmonic effect. So even before the optical science were born. So this is the charged glass in the middle age. So if you could use the microscope to observe these glasses, so you will see some uh, metallic uh, uh, nanoparticles are embedded in the glass. So uh, at resonance, the field inside and around the nanoparticle is very strong. Light is strongly confined at the nanoscale and therefore you have enhanced uh, absorption and the scattering. So this type of the nanoparticle with the negative permittivity uh, could enable very, very strong light matter interactions. So it can confine the light in nanoscale and significantly enhance the local uh, electric, uh, the local field strength and also the scattering and also the absorption. Okay, so uh, uh, such a kind of the plasmonics uh, can really indeed bridge the gap between the electronics and also the photonics. So by squeezing the wavelength uh, of the propagation ledge and it can boost also is the intensity of the localized field. So uh, this is uh, an example about the uh, plasmonic device. So uh, it is well known that uh, kind of the metal uh, insulator and the metal, uh, we also call this one the M M heterojunction, can be a general plasmonic planiform for waveguides uh, like uh, nano cavity, uh, metal materials, and also the nano antenna. Uh, so such a kind of MIM device could also support strong localized uh, field or the localized surface plasma parents with strong field localization. 
uh, another thing uh, we all know we also need to discuss in the light and the matter uh, interaction is about the uh, photovoltaic conversion of the mid infrared. So, uh, photovoltaic conversion of the mid infrared radiation has many applications. Uh, for example, here, like the photo detection, and uh, it can be also used in the imaging system. Uh, for example, for the defense or maybe for the security applications. And also, uh, on the other hand, it can also uh, be used for the energy harvesting. So uh, especially it is also useful for the energy harvesting for the long wavelength region. So uh, even though in Q now uh, we have applications for this type of key, uh, but we still have several uh, challenges. For example, uh, the conventional barometric detector uh, usually have complex uh, cooling facilities and then their response time is very slow. And for the interband photo detection, uh, they have challenges in the band gap engineering and the problems in frequent organ recombination. So also, as you can see on the right figure, the responsivity of the current device decreases very fast in the long wavelength region. So uh, in order to uh, fill the gap of the long wavelength device, a uh, concept of nano rectenna has been proposed. So uh, we know the rectifying antenna or uh, rectenna has been a common technique for the wireless transfer or transferring RF and microwave power. So basically, uh, antenna in the microwave region will be used to receive the electromagnetic wave and uh, it's loaded nonlinear circuit such as the diode or maybe the fat can converse to receive the RF power into DC electricity. So at low frequency, the conversion efficiency can be easily go beyond 90 percentage. As I mentioned, inspired by such a type of the RF rectenna, people in optics uh, fields are trying to develop nano rectennas, uh, which receive the infrared and also the visible radiation and rectify the optical power into DC current. So it's somehow similar to the function of the solar cell. Uh, however, as you can see here, uh, for this type of nano rectenna compared to the conventional RF and the microwave uh, rectennas, uh, which has very high commercial efficiency. So here, typically, the commercial efficiency is very low. So uh, this is an example about the MIM uh, rectenna or heterojunction. So typically, the nano rectennas are based on this type of the MIM heterojunction. So uh, this is the MIM device made of two metals and also one electric insulators. Well, light keeps the MIM nano structure like a metal material. The strong optical field can be induced inside of this dielectric gap. And uh, this is this uh, energy band diagram. If the gap between two metals is very small, the quantum tunneling could occur. So at low photon energy, the photon assistant uh, tunneling dominates before the threshold of the internal photo emission. So the photon uh, assisted tunneling is a kind of the motor photon process. And then the monochromatic electromagnetic field will excite the new quantum well. And uh, with some uh, uh, virtual states separated from the unpenetrated ground state. So this type of the virtual states could represent the absorption or emission of photons by an electron on the metal surface with certain probability. So uh, in such a type of the uh, motor photon process, the optical signals uh, will modulate the electron potential energy and the monochromatic electromagnetic field may excite new virtual states. So uh, as a result, the photo illuminated uh, tunneling current has components at fundamental frequency and also some higher order harmonics. So also including the nonlinear rectification term and uh, can generate the rectified photo current. So this is some details uh, about this assumption. So provided that the uh, photon energy is high enough, so then we can expand the current into different uh, harmonics. 
and can derive the linear and nonlinear quantum conductance. Here, the important components are the linear conductance related to the power dissipation and the second order conductance uh, related to the rectification. Uh, we also call this the conversion of AC power into DC power. So the second order conductance uh, is responsible for the photo detection or energy harvesting applications. So there is also some other uh, nonlinear optical effects such as a uh, higher order uh, harmonic generation, but they could be uh, very small and negligible unless the incident flux is very, very large. So on the right side, uh, figure shows the contours of the second order uh, quantum conductivity. You can see that the second order conductivity becomes uh, important when the insulator becomes very, very thin, so here in this region. And also the wavelengths become very short. So in this case, it's around the mid infrared region. And this kind of the second order quantum conductivity makes possible the optical rectification. So our uh, first demonstration will be based on that this type of the uh, nano antenna and based on the dipole antenna and also the log purage tooth antenna. And we use this device to make the MIM belt. So uh, we have designed the plasmonic nano antenna with one nanometer filled with MB205. And the nano antenna is formed by two different metals with different work function, uh, which could e effectively make a uh, nano antenna. And we also uh, can visualize this one as a nano antenna plus a nano belt. And also here uh, we have applied the equivalent circuit model to calculate the photoresponsivity for a resonant dipole antenna and also this broadband log period tooth antenna. So the, the, the responsivity we define here as the ratio between the photo current and also the intercepted power. And this is our uh, calculated uh, responsivity for this type of the uh, linear dipole antenna and also the broadband log period antenna. So uh, here you can see, even though we can use this one uh, to add the optical rectification, compared to performance with other existing media infrared device, we find that the responsivities of the nano antenna are quite low. Uh, there are several, several reasons to explain uh, low quantum efficiency. The main one is the impedance mismatch between the nano antenna and also the low-lit nano belt, and also uh, some parasitic cutoff. So this is uh, also concluded by other literatures. And to take one step further, uh, not only we design this uh, MM nano dials based on the uh, nano antennas, we can also make this one with the hyperbolic metal material. Although uh, MIM device shows the unique capability of ultra fast and the sub band gap operation, a nano rectangular geometry may not be able to uh, be the most suitable structure. So, in order to boost the external quantum efficiency, and also uh, later I will show you, we can also use this device to uh, boost the bandwidth of operation. So we propose here an efficient design based on the hyperbolic metal material. So this uh, hyperbolic metal material is made of the similar metals and uh, ultra thin, also the MB205 insulator, uh, also though in the middle, and we, which can be seen as a vertical array. Uh, so this is the equivalent circuit model, and we can visualize such a structure as a vertical array of the MIM cells. And moreover, we could patterning the uh, this hyperbolic metal material and the incident uh, infrared can be efficiently absorbed and rectified into DC electricity by the massively parallel uh, MMM belt. So uh, this is the uh, uh, multi-layer metal dielectric compensated film. Uh, such a kind of film can be have uh, uni actually uh, an isotropic medium. So by properly tailoring the longitude and also the transverse permittivity, the uh, ISO frequency surface becomes often hyperbolic, uh, which means the photonic density of states can be very large. 
And this is ideal for uh, many photonic applications, including the hyperlens and also the plasmonic uh, laser. So uh, here you can see uh, we started the uh, hyperbolic matter material of each MIM device made of this type of the cascadic uh, MIM belt. And in order to achieve high optical extinction, the HMM of this type of structure is patterned into a periodic waveguide array. So um, here uh, we can calculate uh, the eigenmode dispersion. So this is the dispersion of this uh, waveguide structure. And you can clearly see that there is a slow wave uh, modes which trap the incident light into the MIM function. So, uh, and this kind, kinds of the slow wave modes can be tuned by the metal thickness. And on the red figure, uh, we show the corresponding absorption. So this type of the absorption peaks agree well with the slow wave mode and also uh, agree well with each other. Uh, next, uh, we could calculate the responsivity of our device. So in this figure, we calculate the responsivity versus the wavelength. So it is seen that the responsivity peak can be up to 100 milliamp per watt, which is considered applicable for mid infrared uh, photo detection. And further, uh, this, peak, this type of the peak uh, can be tuned with respect to the metal thickness. Here you can see when we try to tune the thickness of the metal, we can easily change the frequency or the operating wavelength of the device. And on the right side, uh, as you can see, the responsivity also increases with the number of the stacked MIM layers. However, the peak position is fixed because uh, it is determined by the dispersion of the metal material or the waveguide. Another thing we started is about the uh, geometry or the angle dependence, and also the uh, whether we can uh, improve the bandwidth of this uh, photo detector. So uh, on the left side, this figure shows the responsivity as a function of incident angle. So we find that the responsivity is almost angle independent because the operating wavelength simply depends on the eigenmode propagation inside. Uh, each sub wavelengths of the waveguide, which is the air uh, hyperbolic matter material and the air waveguide so in the x uh, axis direction. And also on the right side, we also propose a in, an in homogeneous structure. So here, this is our structure. And uh, it comprises MIM files of different metal thickness. So you can see that the operating bandwidth and be large due to the combination of the multiple slow wave modes. Again, uh, the performance is also angle independent. And uh, this figure uh, compares the nano retina and also the man material based infrared rectifying device. So uh, you can see that the you can see the photo uh, responsivity and bandwidth can be significantly improved by using the new metal material. And also compared to their angle response, we find that the metal material technique is more robust to the change of the incident angle. And so we can make a short conclusion here. So in summary, uh, we started the photon assistant tunneling and the slow light rainbow trapping effect in the quantum plasmonic hyperbolic metal material. And also we can obtain a good uh, photo responsivity of 100 milliamp per watt. And the next thing, so uh, in this case, uh, even though we designed the hyperbolic man material and we demonstrate it can have higher uh, uh, responsivity uh, for the optical uh, photo detection. However, another material, material challenges need to be solved in making the MIM devices. But until now, there are several methods we have to produce the thin film insulator. For example, the first one is the electromagration. So here, uh, normally we have the uncontrollable gap size and the low device yield. And also the second type is the thin film deposition. So the problems here are the high defect density and also the surface roughness. So uh, the third, 
third one, we also have a uh, surface oxidation. So even though we have the desirable device, the insulator tap are highly confined with specific taps. For example, the aluminum oxide or maybe the ammo oxide. And also for the last one, uh, the, we can also use the ARD to do the adaptation. However, the cost uh, will be very high and sometimes we will have the oxygen defects. So uh, based on this one, uh, we'll propose a new method to produce a uh, high performance uh, thin and the flight oxide layer. So we call this one the uh, template uh, assist synthesis. Uh, so here, uh, kind of the uh, modelic 2D layer uh, PMD can be converted to PMO by thermal assisting oxide annealing. And the periodic table of this element uh, illustrates the possibility of this method since the oxygen and the, the sulfur are in the same column in the table. And here we can see uh, this is the uh, optical microscope image of the converted TA205 and the TAS2. From the color, we can see the conversion of the different materials. And the XPS spectrum of the uh, thin material can be easily characterized uh, the material type in this case, which confirms the conversion of the field. And also the AFM image further confirms the surface profile of our uh, thin and also black oxide layer. And also uh, we use the STM to further characterize the face and also the structure. And also, so here we can usually see the conversion of the TI, TA205 and also TIO2. So at last, we could also use this one to make the MIM nano delt and we also demonstrate the good responsivity and the optical rectifying of this device. So here you can see the tunneling current density may increase dramatically as the insulator thickness decreases uh, because the tunneling probability of the electrodes through a thin barrier increase exponentially, which decreases the barrier thickness. And also we can easily tune this device through the different bias. And uh, at last, we will have a summary in this case. So uh, we also propose a new technique to easily obtain the flight and also high performance MIM device. So here we should note uh, our technique can be combined the Nordic CVD method to produce large scale TMO layers, and which is very suitable for the MIM couch. And then uh, we may be possible to make this uh, Body combined material structure with the uh, MIM cells array. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you to you. Very interesting talk. Let's uh, uh, let's see if there are questions. Okay, um, I have a question actually. I see that uh, you are using usually very thin metals. Uh, are you considering? Uh, I mean. Maybe are small, but uh, they could be important. No local effects in the metal, or even some quantum effect. Uh, I think they consider something here, but honestly, not quite sure now. But I think they they consider different metals and also effects inside of the uh, this type of the device. But okay, they so. they didn't show all of the information here. Okay. Yeah, because probably it's an important. Uh, it's important to consider because I remember some of the, your film was five nanometer, something like that. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk.